G'day, how you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajik people of the Noongar Nation. Now today, I'm going to review uh, this pair of chukka boots, the Colton Boot by Hutbury Boot Brand Rhodes. Before we start, I just want to point out the uh, new background. I've changed the rolling review video at the back because it got so much flack over it. Um, and as my friend Dale from Dale's Leatherworks or uh, Aerosurfer LV said, I don't have a framed photo of Wyatt Gilmore at the back. <laughs> so I've got that. <laughs> okay, the boot. This is a chucker boot identified by the shorter shaft length uh, just up to the ankle bone and the two eyelet lace fastening. This is not a desert boot, which is a type of chucker boot, but generally of a stitch down construction with thick, soft crepe rubber soles. All desert boots are chuckers, but not all chuckers are desert boots. Uh, chucker boots have a complicated and sometimes disputed history, especially as to how they originated. The generally accepted story is that they originated in India amongst the officers of the colonial British troops stationed there. Uh, the name Chaka will give you a clue of the origin if you know the game of polo. A polo game is split into six playing periods of seven minutes each, and these playing periods are called chakas. It's said that the chaka boot was invented as a comfortable boot to be worn in between chakas and before pulling on the tall riding boots for the match itself. The original chucker boots were made of full grain smooth leather with thin leather soles. The great grandchildren of that type of chucker can be seen on the catalogues of great English boot makers like Cheney and Crockett and Jones. Uh, and over the years, the leather soles have also been replaced with day night and the smooth calfskin uppers have uh, now and then been substituted with suede and nubuck. Sometime in the late 19th century, uh, some pairs made uh, their way, I guess, through British colonial uh, travellers to South Africa. And the early white settlers of South Africa, who through their Dutch heritage pioneered stitch down construction there, known by the Dutch Afrikaans name of Veltschorn, used the Veltschorn method of construction to make their fellies. These uh, perfected the art of making chuckers from basically three pieces of leather, the vamp and the two uh, rear quarters. The vellies were made from soft leathers and uh, suede predominantly so that the whole shoe was light and easy to make. Then comes the Second World War and South African regiments were stationed in Egypt. Their officers wearing their vellies uh, as they were better for desert warfare than the thick, heavy ammo boots that they'd been uh, issued with. The British officers copied them uh, in the English bazaars, adding uh, soft crepe soles for stealth in the sand and someone called Nathan Clark so liked the look that he took the design back to his family's shoemaking company, Clark's, and in the late post-war 1940s, the desert boot was born. The Colton uh, chucker boot, while looking like a desert boot because of the suede finish, is more on the traditional chucker side of the type. It's made up of the three main pieces of leather plus the single piece backstay. A low cut three and a half inch shaft measured from the uh, top of the heel stack. Two antique brass eyelets. It is Goodyear welted and sits on a Vibram rubber 430 mini lug sole. In appearance, it's stylish, but also very relaxed and laid back. So styling this Colton boot is pretty simple. You won't be wearing uh, this except for very casual situations. So the styling would involve jeans and t-shirts or light relaxed shirts in the summer. And if you do wear this in the cooler months, basically just throw on a jumper or a casual jacket like a Harrington or a wax trucker jacket. You can stretch this to go to work in a relaxed atmosphere office, perhaps not a legal or an accounting firm, uh, and then you can then pair it with nice chinos and a sports coat or blazer. Basically just stay casual. Now before we go on and look at the construction, um, let's just take a look at the brand Rhodes. As I said earlier, Rhodes is the house brand of men's clothing and gear website Huckbury. You should know that Huckbury provided this pair of boots uh, for me to review. I wasn't paid anything and there's no agreement to uh, endorse the product. 
so I'll be doing this review with my normal uh, warts and praises coverage. Rhodes shoes and boots are made in Leon, Mexico. I have already reviewed their Owen boot a couple of years ago when I first started this channel. In fact, it was one of the first heritage style American boots I bought because I thought their entry level price range was something that I could afford. From what I can see, uh, they also source their leathers from Leon out of uh, Lefarc Tannery, for example, which supplies uppers leather to people like Thursday and others, and also from neighboring uh, Alpha Max Tannery. Both of these are certified tanneries, meaning that they undergo audits of their processes and are certified for being environmentally responsible and for paying their workers appropriate wages and so on. I understand they're made in a family-run factory where the artisans are experienced in making and crafting shoes. The Rhodes range is not currently huge. The Huckbury website, and I'll leave a link below, uh, show that they have a loafer style, a boat shoe, um, three chucker styles, including this Colton model, a roper boot, two different Chelsea boots, two service boots, and a low main style hunting boot. When I first stumbled on the Rhodes Huckbury website, uh, they had a few more service boots like the Dean and, and my Owen boot, uh, indie style Mokto, uh, as well as several other styles. Now, whether they simply decided to rationalize or whether COVID had something to do with material supply and construction times, the range has narrowed. However, uh, amongst all their styles, they make each in several uppers leathers and most will have at least two different styles of outsoles. Now to construction. I think I said earlier that unlike the traditional chucker uh, stitch down construction, these are Goodyear welted. Stitch down construction is where the uppers are flared out and stitched directly to the sole, uh, whether that involves a midsole or not in the process. A Goodyear welt construction is where a strip of leather called a welt is introduced and sewn to the inside and uppers around the inside edge, and then sewn through the outside edge of the welt to the midsole and the outsole. You can watch my Goodyear Welt video up there. Uh, so you can see that the outsole itself is a Vibram outsole, the 430 uh, model which replicates their famous commando sole pattern. But it is very low profile and called their mini lug version. They grip, uh, the, the grip on these is pretty good and the rubber is pretty durable, it's quite hard. Uh, in about 2017 or 2018, even Red Wing replaced their Neo Cork soles in their Iron Ranger boots uh, to these for better grip. While they're uh, being totally functional, they're also quite low profile, so looking discreet and stylish uh, as much as lugged soles can do. The heel stack looks like it's leather and it's glued and nailed to the outsole and then a Vibram top lift, quite a thick one, is attached. The outsole is glued and stitched to a leather midsole and obviously stitched through to the leather welt. The natural leather color of the heel stack, midsole, and welt gives the boot a nice contrasting base to whatever uppers are used. Inside the boot, there's a leather comfort insole glued on top of whatever the actual insole is. I'm assuming it's leather. I can feel uh, foam padding under the leather comfort insole, but that does hide whatever uh, filler is used inside the welt. It might be cork or foam, I, I can't really tell. Uh, the uppers in the vamp that forms up to the tongue uh, and the shaft itself are all lined with a soft leather. The uppers themselves are obviously suede and a nice velvety feeling suede too. Nothing to complain about there. The brass eyelets are not really backed at all. They seem to be metal folded back to secure the eyelet and barely showing at the back. So I'd worry a little bit as to whether they pop out in time. At the moment though, they look and feel pretty secure. The stitching overall is pretty good. I forgot to mention that this is a storm welt where, with a little ridge on the welt pushed up against the uppers. Uh, and the stitching on the, the uh, welt is even and straight. The stitching on the uppers, double stitched at the quarters, but single stitched everywhere else, is again neat, straight and tidy. Overall, it's really very nicely finished. As to leather care, uh, this is, I feel, quite a tough suede. It's a little over two millimeters thick plus the one millimeter thick lining. I don't really think you need to sweat it over leather care, but uh, look after it like you would look after any suede. The uh, color on suede though can fade, so I'd keep them out of direct sunlight. Allow them to air dry if they get wet, 
And if you want them to uh, retain their looks, use a, a shoe tree, especially as they are so soft. Brush them regularly with a suede brush. Um, that's one with stiffer bristles, sometimes even copper white bristles. And when you brush, brush them first gently against the nap to remove uh, dirt and dust, and then brush them with the nap to smooth it back. If they get dirty uh, with surface dirt that you can't brush off, use a suede cleaner kit that basically consists of a, a stiff brush and a piece of rubber like an old school pencil eraser. Gently rub the dirt and then brush off the dirt and uh, the rubber tailings. Uh, then use the suede brush and freshen up that nap. If they get stained, don't saddle soap. Saddle soap has waxes that can dampen the nap and spoil the velvet look. Use a proper suede shampoo and spot clean the, tan, uh, the stain, making sure it dries well and then uh, use the suede brush again to re-raise the nap. On the other hand, if you decide not to keep the pristine fresh look these came in, well, just wear them and let them get beaten up. Uh, the suede will darken and patina and flatten in areas of heavy use and I suspect will look better for it as a well-worn boot for casual use. However, I'd still tell you to brush them regularly uh, to at least keep off the gritty sand and the fine dust which can damage the leather. As for sizing, the uh, boot follows my usual sizing formula in American boots. I take a half size down from my true size. My true size, as measured on a Brannock device, is a US 8.5 in D width. Converting to UK sizing, that's a 7.5. I size these in a US 8D. In that size, these fit well in length and across the ball of the foot. The heel is a little loose, and I'll get to that in a minute. Rhodes offers these in US sizes 8 to 13, which is pretty good, but they don't have different widths, which is not so good. In this size 8, they fit well, not snug, uh, but not roomy either, which means that if you have wider feet or at least uh, something in double E width, I don't think these will fit you, and you may have to size up. I suggest you contact Huckbury's customer service, which I found to be very responsive and helpful. Now, that's the fit and the comfort. What about the comfort? Underfoot, they feel pretty good. The foam backing of the insole and I'm guessing uh, foam filler is pretty shock absorbing when, you, when you're walking around. Uh, around the foot, the suede is soft and the sizing is accommodating, so it's pretty comfy as well. Let me preface what I'm about to say next with a disclaimer that I have not broken these in yet. I've only worn them a total of five times and if you add the times uh, altogether, probably a duration of maybe two full days. So I haven't broken these in at all, which sounds strange for a chukka because my experience and probably yours, chukkas are light boots and don't need much, if any, break in. Well, here's where these are a bit weird. They have a split personality. They look like and the uppers feel like very relaxed, soft, comfortable shoes. However, the sole construction is one tough cookie. They remind me of my Red Wing work chuckers, which I thought were so stiff in the leather, as well as in the wedge sole that I eventually sold them. I just didn't feel it. These have that same feeling to me. The Vibram firm rubber sole is six millimeters thick. The slab of leather midsole is four millimeters thick. The le leather welt that goes across the edge is three to three and a half millimeters thick, not counting the ridge of the storm welt. Put all of that together and that's 13 to 15 millimeters of sole under your feet. That's over half an inch of firm layer where your foot's natural flex point sits. That means that out of the box, it doesn't flex where your foot flexes. In turn, that means a lot of heel slip, especially with a very low shaft and only two eyelets of lace, which doesn't really lock your foot in. So in comfort terms, I find the heel slip annoying and disturbing. <laughs> So I come back to that break-in thing. I haven't broken these in and these do need a break-in. Look, I can't be sure right now, but I'm assuming that once the sole construction is broken in and the thick sole flexes where my foot flexes, the heel slip will reduce and my foot won't constantly feel like it's popping out in the back. Right now though, I don't feel comfortable walking in this and uh, being a chucker because you expect soft comfort mentally it's not a boot that I immediately pull out and pick up and put on. It's not different from breaking in a taller boot, I know, but the psychological expectation means it feels different.
but I have to say that's probably my only complaint. I certainly can't complain about value. Uh, on the Hutbury website, it sells for 198 US dollars. And I think that's a very fair price for what you get. It is well made, well finished. The sole is a monster and the upper suede is nice and soft to the touch. At that price, it will rival Thursday's scout chuckers. And not having a pair of scouts, uh, but knowing Thursday boots from the five other pairs I have, I suspect that they'd compare well in quality. Thursday used their proprietary studded day-night like sole on their scouts. And Thursday usually have a less thick sole construction, so they might wear and flex better. But if you break these in, you know, you, you, you can't compare Thursday's studded and pour on soles to uh, Vibram and thick leather for ongoing durability. In summary then, how would you describe uh, this pair of chuckers? Look, 10 out of 10 stylish. Um, construction, good materials for the price range and well finished. The feel is excellent and soft. Sole construction is very sturdy, but uncomfortable out of the box. I have to say, as chuckers go, I prefer my Astor Flex Bitflex chuckers. Uh, if we, you can watch my review of them up there. Um, I don't wear chuckers as dressy boots in the English tradition. They're too much like a shoe in that sense, and I'd rather wear a dress shoe or a dressier high boot. A chucker dress boot is kind of half and half. <laughs> so in my mind, I equate chuckers with suede or nubuck, and I see myself relaxing on a couch, chucking down a beer or lying back on the sofa and watching TV which means that I prefer the softer Clark's Desert Boot style of chucker boot. These are a split personality cross of the two types of chucker boots that span the range. Well then, I hope you liked my review. You know what to do next. Click on the like button down there. And if you're new to the channel and you do like what you see, please subscribe. The subscribe button's over there. This will help me to grow my channel and as I upload more boot reviews, uh, deep dives into brands and styles of boots, YouTube will notify you so that you don't miss a, a beat. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.